atomic term symbols. term symbols that belong to a given electron configuration will have uh, different energies and the actual uh, relative order of the terms uh, must be determined by calculations. Uh, results of a large number of such numerical calculations uh, give rise to certain generalizations, certain uh, summaries of the results. One of them, uh, which is useful, is Hohn's rule. And uh, according to this rule, the term with the highest spin multiplicity Highest spin multiplicity. This means one with maximum S uh, is the lowest term. In case when there is more than one uh, term with the same S max, uh, choose the one with the largest L value. Uh, for example, this is electron configuration. And let us write 1s, 2s. And the terms arising from this uh, electron configuration are singlet s and triplet s. So th there are just two terms. According to the Hohn's rule, the term with the highest spin multiplicity is lowest, which means this is lowest in energy. In other words, a uh, singlet S term has a higher energy than triplet S term. Uh, similarly, uh, fr from this electron configuration to a P, we have a singlet P and a triplet P term. Again, in this case, this is lowest, according to Hunt's, Hunt's rule. Now, we had one, we had discussed one more example. It was uh, 2p2 uh, configuration. And here we had uh, singlet D, triplet P, and singlet S terms. Three terms are present. Uh, among these three terms, according to Hohn's rule, uh, the term with the highest spin multiplicity is triplet P. And therefore, triplet P is expected to, to be lowest in energy. So uh, this rule is a useful rule, and it can be applied to any number of electrons uh, in open shells. 
So let us next turn to uh, term symbols for more than two uh, electrons. Uh, the rules are closed subshells do not contribute to either L or S. Now, for open shells, we will discuss the case of a single open shell. Let L be the uh, orbital angular quantum number of the shell. L of subshell the maximum occupation number of such a subshell is two times two L plus one. If N electrons are assigned to this subshell we indicate it by such a notation as, for example, here, P2. In general, L, N here. Now, uh, sub the terms arising from Ln are the same as terms arising from n max minus n. Same set of term symbols. This is a useful rule. Uh, for example, let us write it here. Uh, oxygen atom has the ele ground electronic configuration 1s2, uh, 2s2, uh, 2p4. Uh, whereas carbon has ground electron configuration, 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. In oxygen, there are eight electrons. In carbon, there are six electrons. Uh, now, the open shell is 2p in both cases. Uh, here, for the 2p su subshell, maximum occupation number is 6. And uh, we see that in the case of oxygen, P4 subshell uh, is P6 uh, let us write P2 P6 minus 2 maximum occupation number is 6 and uh, N is Two. 
Therefore, P2 and P4 subshells have the same set of term symbols. Now, P2 subshell uh, has only these three terms. Uh, according to this rule, this rule here, and when we apply it to uh, P2 and P4 cases, uh, P4 uh, subshell, through P4, has the same, exactly the same set of uh, term symbols as in P2. So this is a, a useful rule which can be easily applied to either uh, when n is equal to 1 or 2 because uh, we can easily determine all the term symbols whenever uh, this n here is 1 or 2. Uh, and we can apply it to uh, more than two electrons uh, using this rule. Okay, now let us up, uh, have some examples about these. The question is ground state term symbol. We are interested in just one uh, term symbol using Hun's rule. Okay, uh, let us start with uh, oxygen again. The electron configuration is closed shells, and the open shell is 2P4. Uh, let us use a spin diagram for this purpose. This is a 2P orbital with m1, m 0, minus 1, uh, ml value. Uh, according to Hohn's rule, uh, the term with the highest uh, s value is lowest in energy, and that's what it means, ground state, lowest energy. Uh, for S to be highest, MS must be highest. So we distribute the four electrons here uh, with parallel spins to make MS largest. We have one more electron here, so it has to be down spin, and we place it to the uh, orbital with the highest ML. These are ML values. Now, uh, each upspin means uh, plus 1 over 2, and each downspin means minus 1 over 2, and MS is the sum of such uh, values. So here, uh, MS of this electron cancels that one, so we have 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2, we have 
one for the net MS. Uh, similarly, ML uh, this capital ML value, this is the sum of uh, ML values of each electron. Here we have two electrons, two times one, plus one times zero, no contribution from zero, plus one times minus one. So the net result is plus one. And this indicates uh, for this, for these MS and ML values, uh, uh, well, these values for the MS and ML indicate that uh, S has to be one and L has to be one. Or the term symbol is uh, triplet P. This is the, as we see here, uh, the ground, ground state term symbol is triplet P. As another example, nitrogen. Nitrogen has atomic number seven. It means neutral nitrogen has seven uh, electrons. The electron configuration is closed shells, and there are three electrons in the 2p subshell. We may use a spin diagram like this. Now we have, according to Hohn's rule, we uh, we put the electrons into the, into the orbitals with maximum ms value, and this is the, the uh, situation. Uh, total MS is some of the in the uh, small MS values. In this case, this is three over two. Total ML is one minus one zero. Uh, this part belongs to the upper case. Uh, from here, we conclude that S has to be three over two and L has to be zero, so that the term is the letter code corresponding to L equals zero is capital S, and the multiplicity is two times S plus one, which is four. So this is a quartet S term symbol. This is the lowest energy term in nitrogen. Uh, let's have one more, one last example call it, this is nickel. Nickel has uh, atomic number 28. Uh, and the electron conf ground electronic configuration is closed shells. Uh, th there are two electrons in 4S and eight electrons in 3D. This is also closed. So there is just one open shell here, open subshell. It's a D8. Uh, to get the lowest uh, energy term, term symbol, you may work directly with eight electrons. Uh, uh, using a spin diagram, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, this is a 3D orbitals, and then indicate the uh, ML values, two, one, zero, minus one, minus two. Uh, you may work directly with uh, D8 configuration, which means I will try to make uh, parallel spins as uh, high as I can. One, two, three, four, five. 
uh, three more electrons. I start with the highest ML, six, seven, eight. Two, four, six, there are eight electrons total. Then I, uh, you, uh, for the total MS, the, the contributions arise only from these two, so we have one. Because this is plus one half, this is minus one half, they, they will cancel each other. The only non-zero uh, value contribution is going to come from the, these uh, separate unpaired electrons. Uh, the total ML, val ML value is two times, there are two electrons in this orbital, two times two is four. Two times one is two, it makes six. No contribution from here. Then uh, minus one, five, minus two, three. So this is three. Now this means S is equal to one and L must be equal to three. So the uh, term symbol is F and the multiplicity is three, spin multiplicity. So this is uh, the lowest energy term symbol of the nickel atom is a triplet, triplet F term. Now, you, you may obtain the same result by using this rule. It says uh, D8, uh, the, the term symbols which arise from D8 subshell are the same as D, what is the maximum occupation number of a D subshell? 10. 10 minus 2, 10 minus 8 is 2. D8 has the same subshells as D2. If you do this, you will indicate just two up arrows. And you see this uh, MS, total MS value is the same as, as this one, one. And then total ML value is two plus one, three. So we have the same results. Fine. Now, uh, we compare the results of such calculations with experimental observations. Of course, we need numerical values. And uh, to get the numbers, we have to do calculations. Now, as an example, uh, I will discuss the carbon atom. So here, experimental uh, energy levels, levels of carbon atom. Starting with the ground, lowest energy, uh, state, I will indicate just several uh, excited uh, levels. So if this is increasing energy, uh, <coughs> relative energies are, if this is zero, uh, the first 
experimental excited level is at 16.40. This is in wave number unit. And the next one is at 43.4 wave number. So the lowest. Uh, this is ground level. Uh, first excited, second excited. And the energy level after this is very high up here, somewhere there. This is at 10,192.3. And of course, there are infinitely many others excited energy levels up there. But we are just showing one, two, three, four, the first four uh, experimental energy levels in carbon atom. Now, for the carbon atom, if you remember, the, these are the term symbols that arise from the ground electronic configuration. Each one of them means a different energy. And the lowest energy is triplet P, uh, uh, lowest term. Uh, then we expect singlet D to be, it's like, uh, here is, triplet P, then somewhere there, singlet D, and singlet S is even higher. I'm just showing the, the first terms. Now, calculations, actual calculations, indicate that uh, the energy difference between the ground term symbol, triplet P, and the singlet D term symbol is about 10,000 wave number. If this is this difference is approximately 10,000 wave number. Uh, that number is roughly the same as the difference between uh, these levels and that level over there. So it, it, it appears that uh, our calculation gives just in the range between zero and uh, 10,000, just two en different energies. But experimentally, we have within the same range, uh, four different uh, energies. So uh, how is this going to be uh, explained? But before explanation, please note that the unit is here is uh, wave number, centimeter minus one. Centimeter minus one unit uh, for, in, for energy is a very small number. So these numbers, 16 wave number, 43 wave number, are extremely small uh, values. Yes, I do have an, in terms of kilojoule per mole, one wave number is just uh, 0 One wave number in, in energy corresponds to 0 0.012 kilojoule per, 
thermal. You see, in kilojoule thermal, and think about the experimental uh, reaction energies. Those energies are of the order of 40, 50 kilojoule thermal. Uh, so, such a, a 0 0.01 kilojoule thermal is, is a, a very, very small uh, energy. But uh, we do have uh, good experimental techniques and uh, instruments that can measure very small energies also. This is the uh, spectroscopic uh, uh, methods. So there is a need for uh, explaining those tiny differences from what we expect. So we go back to what term symbols mean. It is the solution of this problem. with the Hamiltonian kinetic energy of the electrons plus uh, Coulomb potential. This is Coulomb interaction. Uh, the solution of the Schrodinger equation with this potential energy, Coulomb uh, potential energy, gives values for the total energies, E. These energies correspond to the energies of the term, terms. On the other hand, uh, th this experimental data is giving us uh, the experimental energy levels. Numerical values of the term energies uh, do not match exactly the experimental energies. Now, in fact, these three together uh, correspond to the triplet P, the ground term here that you see. And this one here this one here corresponds to singlet D. Now, note that triplet P has a degeneracy arising from both spin, uh, spin part and also uh, space parts. So how many states are represented here? Three times three is nine states. Nine states have same energy at uh, when we confine our Hamiltonian to just kinetic energy plus the electros. Uh, Coulomb interaction, potential energy. Uh, and here we need to explain that these nine states are energetically split from each other into one, two, three different uh, energies. Now this is explained by uh, 
there should be an X additional term in the Hamiltonian. Otherwise, uh, those three different energies could not arise. Uh, the effect is small in the sense that those numbers, 16 wave number, 43 wave numbers, are, are not uh, large numbers, uh, as I had indicated here. Uh, the, an addition is made to the Hamiltonian, which is called spin orbit Hamiltonian. This is called spin orbit Hamiltonian. And it has been found that we may approximate the spin orbit Hamiltonian by a simple expression, a constant times uh, orbital angular momentum dot into spin angular momentum vectors. It has this form. This L is the total orbital angular momentum vector, and the capital S is the total spin angular momentum vector. A is a constant, is a constant. Uh, a is a constant for a uh, term, for a term symbol. What is the term symbol? It means given S value and L value, like here. Uh, S is equal to 1. You, you get it from the spin multiplicity. And capital L is 1. Uh, <coughs> inclusion of this. So now, if you uh, okay, H prime, our original H plus this spin orbit Hamiltonian modifies these energies because now the Hamiltonian is has an additional part. The additional part is the Simit or uh, spin orbit uh, interaction. The E's, the energies are modified by a correction. This E is the original E. In other words, like a value here. And then uh, this ESO, spin orbit energy, is added to it. It, it, uh, it modifies the in, uh, original energy. Now, the effect of, uh, or the actual value for the spin orbit energies uh, is obtained by introducing the total, or, uh, total ang uh, angular momentum, total angular momentum, It's a vector, and definition of the total angular momentum is the sum of uh, orbital plus 
spin angular moment, momenta. The sum of these is, gives us the total angular momentum. Now, the uh, important operators are square of this and z component of the total angular momentum. As a rule, uh, z component of any angular momentum commutes with square of the angular momentum. These commute with each other. Uh, they also commute square of uh, orbital angular momentum and square of uh, spin angular momentum. So, so far, we have four operators which commute with each other. What are they? Uh, L square, S square, J square, and JZ. The, these four different operators commute with each other. They also commute with uh, this Hamiltonian. They commute both with the, this part and also with the spin orbit Hamiltonian. All commute with uh, H and H spin orbit. H is the original uh, kinetic energy plus Coulomb interactions and spin orbit interaction is this term. All these operators commute with uh, the more accurate Hamiltonian. Uh, this means that the solutions of the Schrodinger equation with this, which, which is this. Let us call this E prime. The state functions, including spin orbit interaction, psi prime, they are eigen functions of H prime, which, which also includes spin orbit uh, Hamiltonian here. Uh, because H prime commutes with uh, these four operators, according to our general principle, uh, there are five operators altogether, four of them these, and the fifth one is H prime. All of these five operators must have the same set of eigenfunctions. Or, imagine uh, you, you solve this Schrodinger equation exactly, and you have obtained psi prime and the E prime. The psi prime that you obtained exactly must be eigenfunctions of L square, S square, J square, and JZ. Now, we know the eigenvalues of these. Eigenvalues of L squared are L times L plus 1, or we can just say uh, indicated just by specifying L number, because eigen, eigenvalue is just L times L plus 1. Similarly, this one 
eigenvalues of s square are s times s plus 1. Uh, now, for the eigenvalues of j square, j times j plus 1. Uh, all angular momenta have sim uh, similar properties. Eigenvalues of L square are L times L plus 1. Uh, S square are S times S plus 1. These are both angular momenta. The, the, the difference is this is orbital angular momentum, this is spin angular momentum. Now, J square is another angular momentum. What is the difference of J from L and S? It, J is the total sum of L plus S. So uh, it should not be surprising that eigenvalues of J square uh, have uh, that form, J times J plus 1. And eigenvalues of Z component are MJ, which are constrained between plus J value and minus J value. So this is also characteristic of any Z component of any type of angular momentum. Uh, here, for there is SC. SC values are constrained between plus S and minus S. Here there is ML. ML values are constrained between minus L and plus L. So it is similar. Let us give a break.